Hi everyone! In this video, I'll start assembling CyberQuad from Tesla. I think it will be a good addition to Tesla's Cybertruck project. It'll also be good training with electric traction as I haven't done such homemade products earlier and I'd like to try so much. CyberQuad will have a 72 volt electric motor. The case can be made of plastic or even stainless steel. In general, I'll be assembling a standard rear wheel drive quad so this video can be useful to those who are going to build something similar with an ordinary internal combustion engine. All sizes will be placed under this video absolutely free of charge as soon as the quad will be ready. This is my first project where almost all the components I bought in advance. But it wasn't so easy, as there was no full set of spare parts for every kind of quads, so I had to collect a kit from different models within several months. The list of spare parts used for this project will also be mentioned under this video or in the separate theme in the group. One of the expensive components in the kit was the wheels. I bought them with a similar tread. The original ones from Kenda cost twice as much. Another not cheap component is an engine assembled with a controller and a battery. For this project, two engines are provided. Almost the entire project will be made of two pipe sizes. I'll take one half inch tube for the frame and three quarter inch tube for the levers and brackets. But I think only one can use a half-inch pipe. It's not so expensive and we don't need much for the project. First, I'll assemble the frame. It'll consist of two identical halves connected by jumpers. For this purpose, I cut the pipe in size. Quad will also have a very simple construction. We'll just need some welding and a grinding machine and also a pair of skillful hands. On every part for better docking, I made a sample for pipes on the ends. Then I laid out and welded the parts together. The second frame half I assembled over the first. Then, two halves were connected with jumpers. Here we got a simple frame for the future quad. Now we start making the front suspension. For this purpose, I took steering knuckles and nave with a brake disc. I used two upper ball casters at once as the lower one could be sold only with a lever. Before welding the front levers, we need to know their size, and for this purpose, we need to assemble the front wheels. Though the tires are new, they're very hard. I hope this is for tires couldn't erase quickly. I put together a wheel and completely forgot about tire valves. I used ordinary ones from the nearest tire service. Although tires and disc were from one set, the gap was very large, so we should come to an explosion. Also with explosion, the oak rubber didn't want to get put on. After several attempts, the tire warmed up and straightened a little, and I managed to put it on a disc. I screwed the nave to the disc and fitted it on the frame. That's how I learned the sizes of the levers, they should be different. The upper one is always shorter for better sustainability on turns. The production of levers starts with silent blocks, I bought a set at once. A large one goes for the rear pendulum and a small one goes for the front suspension. We need only to cut off a small part of tires. I made the bushings for the silent blocks from the one inch pipe. We should increase the diameter slightly and weld in a small segment made of the same tube. Or we can grind it on a lathe, however you like. Both options work, everything is checked on buggy. We'll need eight such bushings. The structure of the levers will be simple. It's a two tubular A-shaped lever at the end of which there will be a bushing from the same tube which perfectly fits the diameter of the ball caster.
I made a simple conductor and first welded two lower levers according to it, then reduced it slightly and welded two upper levers. I reinforced the bushing of the caster with a small plate. I slightly sharpened the clutches from the welding influx. I drove in the silent blocks with a hammer. As a mandrel, I used the tube. I made brackets for silent blocks binding from a 40 mm plate. I made a hole in them exactly under the bolt. All fasteners were from automobile. I cut the corners and made a groove for the tube. I collected the resulting parts on the levers and only then welded them to the frame. The same thing I did with the upper lever. The levers turned out to be wrong, it went up. This can be corrected by changing the angle of the ball caster bushing. Now the suspension movement is correct and we can continue our work. I tried on a wheel at once. Then I welded the levers on the other side. The steering wires will be used from quad, however, we'd have to extend them on a couple of inches. Turning of the wheels will be guided by a steer tube. For now, I don't know in what kind of position to place it, so I'll return to it later, and now I'm going to the rear suspension. It'll be of pendulum type. I'll start with the binding to the frame. I took the lower axle and two silent blocks. The axle will be twisted to the profile pipe at this point. It's desirable to take a square one with a 3mm wall and weld bushings for bolts into the holes. By the way, we should strengthen this entire thing with gussets. But I'll still use such tube as there is no square nearby. I welded the made detail to the frame. I took a bearing mount assembly in the gathering as I was attracted by price in $10.27. It is very cheap for such detail with bearings. Before measuring of the pendulum, we need an attachment to the pendulum for the bearing assembly. I don't have any thick metal, so I found used the pipe which I have a fat lot. I cut off a segment from it and straightened it into the plate. I cut pieces from it according to the marking. I tried on the detail and drilled a hole in it. I was preparing to smooth the corners already, but I thought back that I was making a quad which body consisted of triangular segments and left everything as it was. Now we can find out the exact size of the pendulum details. I decided to weld it from the shaped tube. From one end, I welded the clutches for silent block into it. 
From the other end, there'd be a slot for brackets. There will be a bend cut in the middle. Two pipes were connected to each other by jumpers made of pipes. It is important for the silent blocks clutches to be exactly opposite each other. The silent blocks are drove in the pendulum in a certain sequence. First, I drove in silent block through the mandrel. Then we insert the axle and it becomes closed with a second silent block. Now we need to put on washers and tighten the nuts. Further, there can be welded the bearing assembly. In order, it was parallel to the axis I measured the same distance from it. It should also be placed in the center of the pendulum. After all manipulations, I tacked the plates to the pendulum and tried on the ready detail in its place. The travel turned out to be even, just goes between two pipes of the frame. Here comes the rear axis and a whole epic story about it. I've changed it more than once, as every time under the required article there came a completely different axis. I had to take a slightly shorter one in a couple of inches. I put the hub star on it and I put in the bearings. It turned out to not be of the best quality. The groove for bearings had a shifted axis. I forgot about the fact that most axes have a different radius from different sides. This one has left part going further than the right one for 2.76 inches. I won't rush to conclusions for now. I tried on the chain, it fitted well, and is situated at a normal distance from the pendulum. Now we need to try on the wheels. They had to be blown up too. I think you can see for yourself how small this axle is and even wide wheels didn't save the case. I set the wheels as they should be. I measured the distance and this quad in size turned out to be very similar to Yamaha Raptor 700. This means that we could use its axis, but it costs 10 times more. But for now I can't afford it according to obvious reasons. I concluded that it'd be necessary to refine the already existing axis. I won't even be sorry to do it as it is an outright reject. The axles should be increased by spacers, which I'll make from the drives. The tree just fits in size. I'll connect the trees through the pins. For this purpose, I drilled the holes in each detail on the end and sharpened them as a pencil. It is very difficult to weld details exactly, as the welding constantly takes them away from the required axis. On the right side, it won't be possible to strengthen the welds with the bushings, as I'd want to remove the axle in case. It turned out even better than from the production line. On the left side, I reinforced the seams with a split bushing from the tube. After all, everything went especially well for such first try. In the next part, I'll install shock absorbers, steering wheel, engine, and we'll try to take a ride at least to the workshop. Thanks everyone for your attention. If you like this video, then share with it, give your thumbs up, subscribe, and see you in the next part.